Hello. You were in a dream of mine about four months ago. And uh, in that dream, I was trying to do something the way I was always doing it. And you stopped me. And you said, you cannot go this way anymore. And if you try, I will call the police. <laughs> so... The law of attraction of police yeah. are coming for you. <laughs> so the police were called, and my spirit guide came, and he said, Dave, long time no see. We have to figure out how to get you on stage. So he started giving me all these dips, different options. But my real question is... Okay, I had a really bad childhood, okay? My mother pretty much messed me up, which you kind of answered why um, with that lady. Yeah. There was tragedy. Uh, my mother was an alcoholic, very abusive. Basically, I don't, I, you know, most people are raised by their parents. So I was lowered. Yeah. Okay, so I went through a lot of homelessness and addictions yeah. And, yeah. and a really hard life. And in 2012, I had a visitation by a spirit. And since then, I've had a few other visitations, and one of them... Hermes came up to me and he says, we are going to give you the gift of love, but in exchange, we want you, all of you. So my question is, how do I attract a life that's almost the polar opposite of what I've attracted in the past? Because this glorious contrast that humans don't think they want in the tragedy, and it was, in the awfulness, and it was, of those early years in the observation of it and the experience of it you were creating the opposite end of the stick it's just how contrast works contrast puts things into focus and so when we say as a problem is being experienced or created the solution is too simultaneously but the person in the midst of it can't see both you can't see the solution while the problem is before you, even though both are growing and becoming equally. So the worse that is, the more the solution is. Then it becomes about what end of the stick are you focused upon? And most people who have lived that and therefore are remembering that keep that end active, 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 active. But they keep launching stronger and stronger rockets. So the more you suffer with that, the more you ask for something different. To the point that your desire became stronger than the reality of your belief. And that's the point that you started having those visitations. But you had to have them in unconscious state or in dream state because your current reality wouldn't let them in. In other words, it couldn't just occur to you that easily. It had to come to you in the way that it did. And so now here we are having this conversation. Almost everything that happened in this room today was the underpinning of the conversation that we are having now, isn't it? And so now in your wake state, you're beginning to move through all of this. The conversation about a husband that did not stay loyal is the same conversation about a parent who is not loyal. So many humans think they want a feathered nest, but you don't and you writhe in the discomfort of the opposite of a feathered nest. Your nest wasn't just not feathered, it was an abusive nest. You were not only not pampered, you were abused. You were not understood, you were not seen, you were not respected, you were not any of those things that your inner being is. And in the absence of those things that you were born knowing were right and knowing is how it's supposed to be, you launched rockets into this time-space reality that make it a greater probability that moving forward you and others will move into that than if it had not happened in that way. Your contribution, while it is a vibrational contribution at first, which doesn't seem enough, is a huge contribution. So then the only question is, how do you get yourself in a place where you can begin receiving it? Well, clearly you already have. You see, there are two ways of going about this. When life is treating you really badly and causes you to launch rockets of desires and you don't know, there's no one to influence you or you're not figuring it out, how to turn in the direction of what you want, then it doesn't get better, but the more you want it, then the worst of it feels. Once you start wanting it to be different, the awfulness of how it is is even worse. Ooh, contrast is still serving you, which makes you want it even more. But if you don't know how to close that gap, then you feel even worse, which makes you want it even more. But if you don't close that gap, 
You feel worse now, which makes you want it even more until eventually you want it so much that you have a breakthrough into it because the desire factor is more dominant than the belief factor. The new creation becomes bigger and more emphatic than the current reality. We're talking to you about the evolution of all species. We're talking to you about how everything moves forward. Can you kind of sort of hear it? So now we come along and we want to teach anyone who wants to hear us that if you want it and you turn in the direction of it, you'll close that gap and you'll like it, but you'll never want it as much as you want what you want. So the question is, is it better for me to want it a little and figure it out and then want it a little and figure it out and want it a little and figure it out and want it a little and figure it out or want it a little and not figure it out and want it bigger and not figure it out and want it bigger and not figure it out and want it bigger and not figure it out, want it bigger and not figure it out and then want it bigger and then figure it out. So you all like the drama of it. You really do. You all get to choose it. But at the time that you make the decision to come into this physical body, it is already known to you that there are so many people who instead of going in the direction of what the contrast has caused them to newly want, most people are huddling and cloistering and protecting and hiding instead of creating. And so every now and again, one of you says, okay, I'll go and I'll mix it up and I'll want it real bad. I'll want it so badly that I'll find it. And then I'll live it and I'll feel the relief of it. And then I can paint some word pictures for others. I'll help others find it. I'll know it so clearly that I'll radiate it. I'll light the path for others. I'll be like a satellite dish because everybody's got an inner being. Your inner being has been calling you all along. Are you following this so far? Pretty good. Pretty good. Yes. So you want to know the piece that you're at now? This is what you came to talk to us about. This is your piece. You lived a bad childhood and you keep remembering it. Yeah. And when you do, it rips you away from who you've become, which is the only problem because you can't go there and be here. So if you were to hear that and care about staying here where you feel so much better, from your now knowing and your now offering a vibration, you will alter that childhood. You'll understand it for what it really was. You'll stop feeling not blessed by its evidence. And instead you will feel blessed by its evidence. And once you feel blessed, then it morphs to be the beautiful thing that it really was not the wrong thing not the thing that proved you weren't good, the thing that is evidence of your goodness. Does that make some sense to you? Kind of like how a pendulum swings, the farther I went to the left, the farther I could go yeah, to the right. It's like that. Mm -hmm. It's like that. When you look back at it and remember those poignant episodes that wash across your mind and take you to your knees, when those thoughts come, you're attempting to do something that no one can do. You're attempting regression because as we said earlier, whether you're focused upon the past or the present or the future, you're doing it now. So there's only two piles alignment with source or not. So when you're in the alignment with source pile and you look back, there's no regression because you see it from your now knowing. But when it feels awful, when you think back on it, you're attempting regression. You're attempting to be something that you are not. It's deep, we know, but you're getting it. You understood that. You understood that. You know how you go home and you feel homesick? That's because home makes you sick. <laughs> it's because if there's too many of them remembering who you were, they activate who you were, which clashes with who you are. And so you got to be real clear about who you are before you go home. You got to remind yourself, do some focus wheels, remember who you are. And then when you go home, you'll see the beauty in all of them. That's never been there before. Be like a whole group of strangers rendezvoused with you at the homecoming. I never knew you were so great. That, that is so true. It's um, cause I, I do, I, I, when I get stuck thinking about 
the incidents that happened in my house, yeah, yeah. it starts yeah. making me feel like I'm unlovable and worthless. Yeah. And, and it, it's hard for me to attract it love. It was never about you. It was about yeah. where they were. Yeah, I just wrote that down a few minutes ago. <laughs> it's about where they were. And of course you got caught up in it. How could you not? It's a reality that you're all living. But out of it was born such clarity about who you are. And there will come a time not far from now. Maybe it'll happen right now. Maybe by tomorrow, maybe it'll be a little while, but there will come a time when you will stand in the wholeness of who you are and feel appreciation about what that was in its accomplishment of who you now are. And then a warmth and a richness and a wholeness will wash through you and over you as you totally embrace who you've become as a result of that. It's like if you were to turn on your radio, you wouldn't condemn it because in its now it's playing the song that you've got it tuned to. You wouldn't say, why aren't you playing that song that I heard five years ago? You get it that your radio is current and it's rendezvousing with what's happening in the now atmosphere. And you're like that too. It's how you're tuning that matters. That's all that matters. So past, present or future, how are you tuning? I understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm.